Right, picking up right where we left off. So here we were finishing up naming of individual ions. So your next thing is a big thing to memorize. Okay, we want you to memorize all of these ions. Now, polyatomic ions, so far we've been dealing with individual elements that are ions. But sometimes elements group together to make an ion. And for all intents and purposes, you can treat each of these polyatomics the same way that you would individual elements. Okay, so the way this table is um, designed is a little bit weird because it sort of makes the ammonium ion here look like the heading of the table. But that is its own ion and needs to be memorized. It's the only positively charged polyatomic that you need to know. Okay? So it may seem like a lot. Okay? There's a lot of things on here, but there are some patterns. Okay? So for example, I want to point out chlorate. Okay, and there are a few in here that have the A-T-E ending. So we have nitrate, we have carbonate, we have phosphate, um, acetate doesn't really fit what I'm about to talk about, but uh, sulfate. Um, okay, so the A-T-E endings are sort of like the root. Okay, so let's focus on these right here. Okay. And if I start with chlor-8, A-T-E ending, it has three oxygens, right? If I remove an oxygen and make it ClO2, my charge stays the same. It's all of the chlorate, chlorite, all of these have the same charge. All I'm doing is removing an oxygen from the formula. And chlor-8 becomes chlorite. Then if I remove another oxygen, I make it a one oxygen, it becomes hypochlorite. So if I add an oxygen, if I'm starting at chlor eight, and I add an oxygen, make it ClO4, then it becomes per chlor eight. Okay, so let's look at a few of the other examples of the ATE endings. So on the upper left here, looking at nitrate, is NO3 minus, and if I take an oxygen away and make it NO2 minus, look, it becomes nitrite. It gets eight, becomes ite. All right, let's look at sulfate in the upper right here. SO4 2 minus is sulfate, and if I take an oxygen away, it becomes SO3 and sulfite. Okay, so that pattern exists for a lot of these. Um, it's not on this list, but if I took an oxygen away from phosphate and make it PO3, 2 minus, or 3 minus, that's phosphite. Okay, so that the pattern exists for a lot of these. So for things like nitrate, sulfate, chlorate, Really, all you have to remember is the ATE versions, the eight versions. And then if you remember the pattern, then you don't have to remember quite as many ions. But you do need to memorize this table. Okay, because it's going to be important. We're gonna keep using these ions going throughout the semester. So you need to know these. So this is a summary of all the things that you need to have memorized for this chapter. Now, it's, again, it seems like a lot, but remember, we already know these. These were already in the same pattern of plus one, plus two, minus three, minus two, minus one, right? So it's not quite as bad as it may seem. Really, you just need to remember that group and your polyatomics, okay? So get started on memorizing these now. Flashcards are great, especially for your polyatomics. Make yourself some flashcards. That will come in very handy.
okay? So question three, which of the following is the formula for the sulf-8 ion? And since we don't expect you to have those memorized yet, let's take a look at, look at the list. So sulf-8 is sitting right there, SO4, 2 minus. Which of the following is the formula for the per iodate ion? So remember what I said, if we add an oxygen to something, then it becomes per whatever that is. So if the formula for iodate is IO3 minus, if I add an oxygen, then it becomes per iodate IO4 minus. And iodate is not one of the ones that you have to memorize, but it's a good practice with sort of thinking about the pattern of things. So which of these transition metals does not form multiple cations? Okay, so remember we had chromium, magnesium, um, excuse me, chromium, manganese, cobalt, those were all, um, and iron, those all made two plus, three plus ions. They were in a little group together, right? And then and then over here on the right, we had aluminum as a three plus, and then we stair step down. And this was zinc as a two plus, and then we stair step down, and silver was a one plus. All right, so which of these transition metals does not form multiple cations? Zinc. So ionic bonds in compounds. So ionic bonds occur between oppositely charged ions. So we have a cation and an anion. And they balance each other's charge, right? So the molecule itself should come out to have a zero charge. So however many negatives I have, I have to balance that with the same number of positives, okay? And ionic compounds, the way they, they form like materials is like so. So our green dots here will be positive ions and our purple dots will be negative ions. So plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. You get the picture. Okay, and they arrange themselves in very orderly patterns, right? Very nice, clean, neat patterns. And we always list the cation first. That's also important to know. The cation always comes first in the element name. Right? So let's write the formula for a compound composed of magnesium and chloride ions. So I'm going to show you a really uh, simplistic way and a very effective way to figure out a formula from the words. Okay? So we know what um, these two ions do. Magnesium always forms a 2 plus. And chlorine always forms a 1 minus. And I'm going to put a 1 right here just to show it. Okay? Simple trick. Simple trick. I'm going to take this number and put it next to the chlorine. I'm going to take this number and put it next to the magnesium. Right? Remembering that we, when it's a 1, we don't usually show it. Okay. So, but when I do that, the result is magnesium, and I have one of those, and chlorine, and I have two of those. Okay. So we can think about it in terms of balancing pluses and minuses. So I've got one magnesium that has two pluses, right, from the, the charge of a magnesium. 
and then I've got two chlorines, that subscript two there tells me that there are two chlorine atoms there, and each one of those has a minus. So I've got the same number of pluses and the same number of minuses. So my formula for magnesium chloride is MgCl2. down here the positive charges must equal the negative charges and also pointing out that we put the positive ion first okay the metal always comes first the positive ion so let's write the formula for a compound composed of lithium and sulfate so lithium is one that always makes the same compound or the same ions so a lithium one plus and sulfate is SO4, 2 minus. Okay, so I'm going to do the same sort of crisscross idea here. I'm going to take the 2 and put it with the lithium. And I'm going to take the 1 and put it with the sulfate. So I'll end up with Li2, SO4. Okay, remember that your polyatomic is like, you treat it just like it's a, an element all of its own, okay? So when there's only one sulfate there, I don't need parentheses, right? I was putting those parentheses just to illustrate that that is like its own unit, okay? But this crisscross pattern works really well and, and works 98% of the time. In fact, now that I've said that, I'm going to go ahead and illustrate when it doesn't quite work. Okay, so let's say I have, I want to do a compound that is calcium, which is a two plus, and oxygen, which is a two minus. All right, so if I do the crisscross thing, I put the two over by the oxygen and the two over by the calcium, and by that logic, I would have this, okay? But my ratio of calcium to oxygen is still one to one. Two to two is the same thing as one to one. So I need to reduce, okay? So it would become just calcium oxide, right? Because I have a plus two and a minus two, and that balances out. Okay, so the only time that you have to remember anything different is if you have the same charges on both. But otherwise, this crisscross method always works. All right, so let's write a formula for calcium and bromide ion. So same strategy, if we write our charges... I'm going to take my 2, cross it over and put it with the bromine. I'm going to take my 1 and put it with the calcium. So I'll have Ca, Br, and I use a subscript to say that there are two bromines there. And to think about charges, my calcium has a 2 plus. So I've got two pluses from the calcium. And then I've got two bromines and each of them has a one minus. So my pluses balances my, balance my minuses. So iron three plus and sulfur two minus. Same strategy. So I'm gonna take my three and cross it over and my two, cross it over. So I have Fe two S three. Right. So let's think about charges. So each iron has three pluses, and then I've got two two irons. So I've got plus 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 three pluses from each iron. And then my sulfur 
each of those has a minus. So minus, 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 minus. I've got three of those. So six of each means that all of my pluses and minuses balance out. Right, let's write the formula for a compound composed of iron three and phosphate. Right, we're getting a little more challenging by using words instead of symbols. Okay, or excuse me, iron two and phosphate. But this two tells me what the charge of the iron is. Right, so that is the charge of the iron. All right, so that tells me that I'm dealing with iron Fe 2 plus. The 2 says 2 plus. And then phosphate is PO4 3 minus. All right, so same strategy now. Once I know the correct charges, all I have to do is the crisscross. So I'm going to put the 2 with the phosphate and 3 with the iron. And I'll say Fe3, and then if I have more than one phosphate, I have to put it in parentheses. So I'm going to say PO4, and then I'm going to put a 2 on the outside of the parentheses to say that I have two phosphates. Okay, if it's only a one phosphate, we don't use parentheses. We only use parentheses when I have more than one polyatomic ion there. In this case, I have two PO4s. So let's see how we did. Okay, I'm going to stop this video here, and we'll pick it up with question nine on the next video.